it was kind of overwhelming at some times trying to because I had this big dark secret that I was trying to like hold on to and deal with and at the same time I was trying to focus on sports and then on school and I was doing really good in the plays I was doing really good in sports I was everywhere I was supposed to be but it just wasn't good enough and nothing would have been good enough for me you know someone like me doesn't suffer from depression I'm, I'm popular I'm in sports I'm active and I don't look like someone who's depressed. We are going to what I call the Roxbury, and a lot of kids call it Roxbury. It's a cliff that overlooks Duluth, and I've always liked going there because for once I felt on top of the world rather than below it. There's no one up there, and it's just a peaceful time for me to go up there. The moment I realized was when I was in my 10th grade health class, just in the room, and they sh had a sheet with all these depressed symptoms. And I was looking over it, and I was like, this is me, this I have every single one of these, hopelessness, uh, suicidal thoughts, everything. I just thought that was normal. That was the way everyone else thought. So we went to my like physician, my doctor, or whatever, and then we went over the symptoms, and we talked a little while, and then he recommended seeing a therapist and putting me on pills. But it wasn't working. It wasn't doing anything for me. So I got in trouble with the law, and um, actually in a lot of trouble with the law. And after that, that was just the worst time of my life because I had failed everyone in every, like, every way I could have. And because um, I had quit sports because of it, I'd quit every activity, I'd quit, and I wanted to just quit on life. That was the point where I knew I just wanted to, I just wanted to die. And yeah, so that was. Oh, that was the worst time of my life. I, there's no other way to explain it. At school, I'd started skipping. I remember one day, my counselor called me on my cell phone, and I was, in the, I was just in the bathroom at the school. I just wanted to be alone. And uh, he said, could you come to my office? And my, my dad was in there and everything, and we figured out a plan. We got me to another doctor, and that's where I started healing. What I learned is uh, staying active is the biggest healer for me, I think, because if I'm always with people or doing things, then I'm not alone as much to self-criticize myself and feel that way. I mean, I was ashamed of being depressed. I was ashamed of who I was, and that's complete wrong mindset. I mean, we need to be happy for who we are and be able to say, hey, I'm depressed, and I just need help, and not be ashamed of that. We need, yeah, that's all. I just hate having to think about people having to go through the same thing I did because it's so painful and it's so dark. And there is help, you can get better, and a lot of people don't think that, and I didn't think that. And that's kind of why, I don't know if you want to bring this up, I have a tattoo for now, it's Pure Sempre Recorder, and it just means forever remember in Italian, to remember just what I went through and um, just how close I was to death and how I will never let that happen again and how I want to forever help other people get over that. So it's definitely been a lot easier. Um, yeah, I feel, I feel fantastic. I got my voice back. I got who I am back. I, you know, I'm Dave and I'm happy to, I look in the mirror now and I'm, and I'm happy to see what I see.